Hello friends. In this video, I want to show you some possible solutions for a problem I have. Um, I have to make some holes in the ceiling to put in these drop-in anchors. And I've tried to do that using the hammer drill on its own, but most of the holes have come out deviated from the perfect vertical. Now, if I were to put in a screw here to hold something near the surface of the ceiling, it wouldn't matter if it was a bit crooked. It still would be near the ceiling, so on. However, what I have to screw in this drop-in anchor is a threaded rod of about one foot long. So, a small deviation in the drop-in anchor will mean a very big deviation at the bottom of the rod. And it's here at the bottom of the rod where I have to hang a steel channel. And if the end of the rod is deviated too far out, I won't be able to secure the channel without beating the rod to get it into the vertical position. So I have to try to get these anchors as straight as possible in the ceiling. Now, as I said, doing this just with a hammer drill on its own, it typically ends up twisted in any plane, and that is not convenient. So I've been thinking of different ways of getting my drill bit perfectly vertical in the ceiling. One of the tools I tried is in this image. Another tool I've thought of is this imitation of a commercial uh, drill guide, to which I added a third foot to make it more stable. It has a press to hold the hammer drill in place and has some springs to make the drilling process much smoother. We'll see how this works. The other options I have thought of include this invention. This is part of an old hard disk drive where I have attached a wall mount for a shower curtain using some bolts and I've screwed in a 3/8 inch male adapter and a copper pipe. The drill bit fits perfectly well inside there with very little lateral movement. First of all, I'll drill the end of the drill bit in and having established the start, then I'll place the hard drive against the ceiling to complete the one inch deep hole. Another option is this device built with parts of an electric motor and a 3 8 inch pipe fixed to the aluminum using melted tin. The drilling procedure will be the same as with the hard drive. Now, I'm going to test these tools in the field. So, let's go, let's go and see the results. So, the question is, can we create a tool capable of guiding our hammer drill perfectly straight, perfectly plumbed, so we can make a perfectly vertical hole? Not with this angle, or this one, but instead, perfectly straight. That's the question. Well, we'll be testing this tool, which I already showed you. We'll also test this one, this one, and this one. Which one helps us get the best results? the best angle. Here I have a line where I must make some holes. And there I have another set of lines. I have about three or four holes to test each one of these tools. I already used this tool to make those other holes, as you can see in this bit of video. This tool is basically a set square or angle finder 
that provides a 90 degree angle with the ceiling. So, the idea is to set it against the ceiling in such a way that this line at 90 degrees will act as a guide for the drill bit of our hammer drill. All those holes, most of them, about 90%, are out of line. Their deviation from the vertical is just too much, about 2-3 centimeters in some cases. It would have been better if I'd used the hammer drill on its own. Finally, I had to beat them with a sledgehammer to get them perfectly plumbed, or redo the holes in the steel channel. My idea is not having to do that, or beat them the least possible. So I will be doing these holes, each line with a different tool, and then I'll share the results with you. These tools have proven quite efficient and effective for creating perfectly vertical holes. The only problem is that the dust from the hole gets into the shaft of the tool and tends to jam the drill bit. So every one or two centimeters deep, I have to get it out and shake the dust off. Otherwise the hammer drill kicks like mad. Okay, now I'll film this last one so you can see the whole process, how it's done. First the drop-in anchor, then the 
setting tool made from the intake valve of a motor. Then we screw in the threaded rod. We tighten the bolts. Now we'll measure the angles so we can see which tool is the best. We have two ways to measure deviations, a good square and a laser level. To set the drilling points we we'll use a self-leveling laser. First we mark the points on the floor according to the ceiling plan placing the laser over each point. The laser transfers the position of each point to the ceiling where I already have made the holes. That's how we marked on the ceiling where we had to make the holes. And now that we have the threaded rods in place, we can verify how far off their ends are from center. In full screen, you can see that the red laser light touches the tip of the thread, the lower nut and the ceiling. And that shows there is a very small deviation. So now we can make the hole in the steel channel where the red light is shining because it is practically on center. If it were deviated, the red light would not be shining on the bottom end of the threaded rod, but instead on the top end of the rod. In that case, we would have to make the hole in the channel at a distance equivalent to the deviation of the end of the rod to its center. If the deviation is too big, larger than the width of the channel, we'd have to beat the rod with a sledgehammer to get it on center. To establish if the rods are perfectly vertical <coughs> without using a laser level, we must consider two planes. <coughs> Let's suppose this is one plane. This is the X and this is the Y. This is one plane and over here we have Z and Y. This is the ZY plane and this is the XY plane. In this case, we have a near perfect angle. Very little deviation from the vertical. In this bearing, we have a small deviation, not more than five millimeters, nearly perfect. So, for this thread, we'll enter XY is excellent and ZY is excellent, nearly perfect. I have measured the angles of all the threads. I have installed and we have the following data. These over here are the holes made with the commercial imitation. 
that is this one. These in the middle, which I have put in a circle, were made with this model, parts of an old electric motor. And these over here were made with this model, including parts of a shower curtain and a hard disk drive. Adding up the figures, I have one, two, three perfect holes here, and that is three out of eight. I have four out of eight, which are near perfect. They fall inside my tolerance limits. And only one out of eight falling out of these limits. This means that with the motor parts we have 38% excellent and 50% tolerable. That is, 88% of the holes are inside my tolerance limits. Only 12% of the threaded rods will have to be beaten to get them centered so I can fit them into the steel channel. Regarding the hard disk drive, we have 60% excellent and 25% inside tolerance limits, which is one centimeter off center. And just like the motor parts, we have 13% of holes clearly off center. Regarding the commercial imitation, we have 50% excellent. 10% inside the tolerance limits and 40% are beyond the tolerance limits. Now, one of these failed holes was due to a stone which pushed the drill off its bearing, and I can't consider that a failure of the model. But still, the commercial imitation has proved not as good as the other models. These are my results, and in my opinion, as the hard disk drive has a bigger surface in contact with the ceiling, it is more stable and controls the drill bit much better than the other models. The surface of the motor parts is small, flimsy and difficult to hold steady. The hammer drill moves a lot and makes it difficult to handle. And this one, as it's made of wood and is not position made, loses its position quite easily. However, this is also a good option. Better than using the hammer drill only with one's hands. Well, I hope you liked this video, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up subscribe, share it with your friends, and thanks for watching. Bye-bye!